Hi, this is the first overview video for Chapter 5, Electric Charges and Fields. This is the first chapter in Unit 2, Electricity and Magnetism, and we are going to start from the familiar ground, static electricity. The section 5.1, Electric Charge, covers material that you might already know, but this is a good section to give a quick read through to make sure that you know all the background knowledge that we would be assuming that you know as a matter of your previous science education or just growing up in the modern world. Um, for example, you know that when two things rub each other, it can generate static electricity. You have seen it if you've taken a sweatshirt off on a dry day. And um, you might have heard about in your history class about the experiments that Benjamin Franklin did with the Leiden jars, flying kites in the thunderstorm. Um, and most importantly, we expect you to know some basic properties of electric charge. Well, we expect you to know that electric charge exists because even that knowledge was not common. But it is common now, so we expect you to know it. And we expect you to know some basic things. For example, these electric charge, they come in discrete units called electrons and protons. Um, so that's what it means, charge is quantized. And amazingly, both electron and proton has the same magnitude of the charge. And based on the experiments people have done, we believe that this charge is conserved. So these are some background knowledge that we are going in taking for granted. And I hope for many of you that taking for granted is justified. And if it wasn't, that's why this section is here, so that you can give it a quick read through, make sure everyone is up to speed on the same chapter. And this is really the underlying background material, that your knowledge of the atom. That atoms, which are electrically neutral, are made up of positive and negative charges. The nucleus contains the positive charge, the electron is what has the negative charge. Or if you go into a little bit more detail, there's uh, protons and neutrons in the nucleus. The neutron is electrically neutral and all that. I hope we, uh, this is not the first time you are seeing it, but if it is, um, the brief descriptions are there and that's the underlying background knowledge that we will be assuming. And the next section talks about conductors and insulators. This is another thing that you might be somewhat familiar with, the difference between rubber and metal. Um, we are going to spend more time with this distinction, especially with the properties of conductor in the next couple of weeks as we introduce concepts that will make this more relatable. But for now, give it a quick read through. There are some lecture demos using conductors that's uh, available. Please give it a watch and we'll come back to this material as we work through these chapters. The one section that we are going to be covering in this overview video that has a lot of mathematical material is Coulomb's Law. This is the summary and specification of what you might already know about electrostatic forces. You might have heard likes repel, opposites attract, and this can be described in terms of Coulomb's Law. Uh, quick thing about Coulomb's Law, this is what it says, that the electric force between two electric charges is proportional to the product of the two charges and inversely proportional to the distance between the two charges squared. If this sounds familiar, well, it should sound familiar. This is the exact same way we specify the Newton's law of universal gravitation, proportional to the product of masses and inversely proportional to the distance squared. It's, um, for now, what we'll say is quite accidental, happy circumstance where you can use a lot of your intuition for universal gravitation to electrostatic interaction as well with some minor adjustments. Those minor adjustments are easier to specify with the mathematical form of Coulomb's law. 
This is what your textbook gives in 5.1 as magnitude of Coulomb force. Um, I prefer the more mathematical version, so let me go to that. So in this discretion of multiple source charges, but you can also imagine this holding for a single charge where n is equal to 1. Um, this is the mathematical statement of Coulomb's law. And there is a lot of information here. It says force is a vector. Well, you already knew that. But just a reminder that there's this uh, unit vector that specifies the direction of the force. And this unit vector R hat is specified as it is in this drawing. It's the vector connecting from the source charge, charge that is producing the electric force, to the target charge, a charge that is feeling the electrostatic force. So this mathematical form already includes this, that like charges repel. If you have like charges, that means this charge Q and this charge lowercase q are the same sign. They are either both positive or both negative. And in that case, the direction of force is same as the direction that connects the two charges together. So if you have one charge, another charge, and force on this charge is in the same direction as the line connecting them, well, that's the repelling direction. And using this exact same equation, we can see that opposites attract. Because if the sign of Q and lowercase q are different, then for the direction of the force, you take whatever direction of the unit vector you have connecting them, and you reverse the direction. So what would have been repelling force with like charges becomes attractive force with opposite charges. So I just want you to highlight this so that you pay attention to this mathematical form of Coulomb's law because it contains a lot of information there. Oh, and this points out one aspect in which electrostatic force is different from the Newton's law of universal gravitation is that the force can be repellent, that uh, two charges can repel each other, whereas with the gravity, they could only attract. And the second thing is um, you kind of have to plug in the numbers to see here. This uh, Coulomb constant, or k sub e, which can be expressed in this form, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, more on that in a little bit, it's a very large quantity. It doesn't take a lot of charge to produce tremendous amount of force. All right, one more thing to point out before we move on. It's uh, what you're used to dealing with in terms of forces. So forces are specified this way. And if you have multiple sources producing force on an object to analyze the net effect of all those forces, you calculate the net force. Here's an example here. You have charge Q2. And if you want to know the net force on Q2, you figure out, OK, how much force is from Q3, how much force is from Q1, add them together. That gives you the net force. This should sound familiar from Physics 4A, but a lot of people do need some reminders, some working back into the groove of analyzing these forces. So we'll reserve most of that for the next week when you're looking at more difficult problems dealing with the static electricity. But for the rest of this week, we want to spend a little bit of time introducing a new concept called electric field. So this electric field is a new concept. It's a new way of specifying a physical system that will help you analyze it. And the section gives you some motivation of why you would want to define a field. It comes down to a mathematical convenience, at least at the beginning. So when you have all these charges, if you have to wait until the, there's a charge here that you want to calculate force on, it becomes cumbersome. So the motivation is, okay, let's uh, calculate what the effect of all these charges would be if we were to place a charge here. And this is why electric field is defined this way. 
it's defined by use of this equation that electric force on a charge Q is electric field at the location that the charge is at times the charge Q. Or looking back at Coulomb's law, you can think of it like, so each one of these describes the force on charge Q. And you are just factoring out charge Q. So that you can describe all these other things that depend on things other than charge Q ahead of time. That's what electric field is. And the expressions here pertain to point charges. And what I want to highlight now is that this is the fundamental equation. This is correct even when we are not dealing with the point charges. So there is a longer video that uh, explaining what electric fields are and why it's uh, important. But for now, we will start from here and we are going to be spending a lot of time with the electric field in the next few weeks. So until then, bye.